guys and welcome to Heidi K Makeup. I am so excited today to be doing a little bit of a collab with you guys. Um, so if you just came over here and you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope that you end up liking this channel. Consider hitting the subscribe button in the bell. I do lots of videos like this one about shopping your stash and trying not to over spend on makeup and a lot of those are like project pan type of videos and I also focus on cruelty free makeup so thank you for stopping by but if you clicked on this video first um, consider when you're done watching this uh, clicking on Sarah's video which will be linked down below I paired up with um, Kitty Approved Beauty uh, to do a little bit of a collab with you guys. So um, I'm so glad that she decided to do it and we were kind of chatting back and forth about what kind of video we would like to do. So I had sent her a message and I was like, hey, would you like to do a collab video? Because honestly, if you're happy that this, this channel is back, you have her to thank. She had tagged me in an Instagram post a couple weeks ago and said, hey, I really miss the makeup channel. And that's what inspired me to start recording over here again. So thank you so much for doing that. Um, and because of that, I decided to send her a message and I was like, hey, let's do a collab together. And she came up with this really great idea about how to avoid overspending on makeup, which I think um, a lot of people have a problem with. I certainly did. And I think that I have some tips and ideas that have worked really well for me over the course of the last few years that have just really, really helped out a lot. So if you're anything like me, I used to watch a lot of beauty videos. I used to watch them way back in the day, circa 2010, 2009, that kind of time. And beauty videos have changed a lot. They've moved a lot away from using what you have and being creative and a lot less tutorials to a lot more hauls and reviews and always looking for the next thing. And it's really easy to suddenly become overwhelmed with an enormous collection. And I know that that was definitely the case for me. I had this ridiculous makeup collection, or at least it was ridiculous to me, that I felt like I could never use everything that I had. I didn't like half of it. Um, and so over the course of the last few years, I've worked a lot on a ton of declutters and a ton of um, project pans to kind of get my collection down to a very, very minimal level. And if you want to check out my most recent collection video, it will be linked right there. But my collection has shrunk down so, so much. And I'm really, really proud of it because it's finally reached a point where like, I'm okay with it growing a little bit. I can pick stuff up and I trust myself to go to Ulta and Sephora and not overspend on a bunch of stuff that's going to go bad or that I'm not going to like. Um, and I've just become a much more conscious consumer. So here are some tips that I've kind of learned and picked up on the way. Tip number one, and I think the most important one, is be careful what you watch. Um, I think that it's totally fine to watch beauty videos on YouTube, but consider spending your time and energy watching videos maybe more like this one if you know that shopping is a problem for you. So. Um, Stay away from hauls, basically, and even like reviews, because if they're reviewing products that you are considering, they can definitely skew towards making you really, really want to buy the product. The second thing that I've kind of done is I've also kind of geared away a little bit from bigger beauty YouTube channels. And that's not to say that I don't watch bigger channels. I do. But if I know that they're getting just tons and tons and tons of brand deals, which good for them, they should be really proud of their brand deals. I don't have any problem at all with YouTubers having brand deals. But I tend to take their reviews a little bit more with a grain of salt. And remember that most of the time, those larger channels aren't spending their own money on the makeup, which can change the way that you review a product. Um, it shouldn't, but it can. So avoid watching hauls, avoid watching um, reviews. That being said, I do think that it's worthwhile to look up reviews um, if you are considering buying a product. So for example, there is an eyeshadow palette that I'm very seriously considering. I may or may not get it. And it's the Pure Visionary um, eyeshadow palette at Ulta. I walked past it in Ulta the other day. I had heard nothing about it because I haven't been following a lot of updates and that kind of thing and new products for a very long time. But I walked past it, I swatched it, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is absolutely beautiful. But I told myself I wasn't going to allow myself to buy it, and I still haven't. It's been over a week. I wasn't going to allow myself to buy it until I went home and I researched it a ton. So 
So I went and I looked up a ton of reviews and a ton of videos about it. And then what I did is I put it on a wish list. I don't let myself buy something the day that I see it, especially if it is a high-end product, and I want to be better about that in the drugstore, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, a lot of times you get kind of tricked into purchasing things right away because it's limited edition and you might not have it. And my experience has been if that product is not there when you're ready to buy it, there will be another product. You aren't going to miss it. You really, really aren't. Which brings me to my next point just avoid limited edition stuff altogether. That's not to say that I would never buy a limited edition product, but especially when it comes to eyeshadow palettes, there's a ton of hype around the limited edition stuff, and everybody's talking about it, and then you never see people talk about it ever again after the limited edition time runs out. And the reason for that is because a lot of beauty YouTubers that you watch don't want to talk about things that you can't buy, but maybe you got sucked into buying that holiday palette, and nobody's going to be posting tutorials on that in like a few weeks. Nobody's going to be talking about it. And so not always, but a lot of times I find that limited edition stuff doesn't always perform quite as well as um, permanent collection stuff. And there will always be a new limited edition palette or a new limited edition product coming out. So it doesn't make much sense to go and buy it because by the time you get to it, it will feel old, if that makes sense. At least that's been my experience with limited edition stuff. Um, another tip that I kind of have is stop following all of those um, brands on Instagram and that kind of thing because they're constantly going to be posting like updates of like new products and their new stuff and um, it can be really, really tempting. So stop following those brands on Instagram. Um, and get off of the sales sites, too. Don't have Hot Look and all these other sites send you emails. Um, if you want to go purchase something, yes, check the sales sites before you purchase it. But don't be subscribed to all of those things that send you emails and text messages and even, like, stuff in the mail. Just don't. Don't look at it. You don't need to know. Um, there are some really good beauty YouTube channels that I like to watch that will dupe popular palettes. So um, I will try to remember to link them down below. But there's this uh, group of two friends that I really, really like that do um, kind of, uh, gosh, I can't remember what they call it, but it's basically they take a palette that's really popular that everyone's talking about and they look through their collection and see if they can find dupes. And I, I love that concept because the majority of the time you're going to find that you already have something that looks the same, it just might not be in the same format, especially when it comes to palettes. Um, I would really encourage you to avoid palettes if at all possible. Um, over the course of the last three years or so, I have really learned how long it takes to finish an eyeshadow, how long it takes to finish a palette. Um, and to put it in perspective, consider that almost a year of exclusive use will typically get you through an entire eyeshadow palette. So look at your collection. If you're anything like me, you probably have years, if not decades worth of eyeshadow already in your collection. So that brings me to another idea. If you haven't done one before, consider doing a project pan. Now I'm not saying you have to do a really big, new, intense project pan for your very first project. Um, you know, maybe don't do pan that palette with an enormous, you know, enormous, like, what are those giant ones, like the Lorac Pros or like the BH Cosmetics ones. Maybe you don't do that for your first project pan, but just pick like a couple of items in your collection that you want to finish up or use and say, okay, I'm going to focus on these items. And I think that doing a, a couple project pans, and it doesn't have to be like a really difficult one, will really put in perspective how much makeup you already have. Another idea is to take a makeup inventory. Um, in my pocket, in my phone, which is charging right now, so I don't have it with me, I have a list of every single makeup item that I own. And I love having that list. I use it for all kinds of things. Um, I use it to pull out and look up dupes if I'm considering buying products. But I also just use it as a general reminder, like 
Heidi, you already have 10 eyeshadow palettes. You don't need to buy another one. Or Heidi, you already have this opened at home. And so an ongoing inventory can be really, really helpful as well. The last tip is going to seem a little bit counterproductive to this general idea, but it's something that I am kind of learning myself, and that is don't buy, um, don't buy a lot of drugstore stuff. That's not to say that there isn't good drugstore stuff. There absolutely is, but a lot of times I will find myself picking up stuff at the drugstore because there is a coupon or because it's on the clearance section or because it's cheap and I'm there already. Um, and I don't do that with my high-end products. When I buy high-end products, I'm much better about thinking about it beforehand. And I think it's a lot easier to say, okay, no, I'm gonna save this money that I would have spent just picking up this foundation because it's on sale. And instead of having four open drugstore foundations or several mascaras open at the same time, Save that money and buy something that you've planned and really, really thought about. Um, so on my makeup wish list that I have going on right now, I am transitioning a lot of my stuff to high-end stuff. Now that doesn't work if you're still excessively buying, um, but because I'm not excessively buying, it has enabled me to realize I will actually get my money's worth out of a product. So I'm okay buying a high-end product. And something about putting down a little bit more money makes me think a little bit more about the product. Um, so those are just some of my tips. I will also link right here in the iCard um, her video as well, because I'm sure that she will have some different tips besides what I have. Um, so if you guys are my subscribers, please go check that out. Tell her that I sent you and consider subscribing over there. I love her channel. Um, but if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comments if there's anything that I left out that you find really, really helpful to help prevent you from overspending on makeup. If you're new, subscribe. And if you'd like to, you can check out either one of these two videos right here or push that circle right here somewhere on my face that will subscribe you. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.